Hello everybody, we are back with KCM Season 2. Week number 4 is getting started right now with Shine versus Barracks. Let's jump right in to game number 1. 자, Alright, here we are. Blitz Y. And our lineup showing up on screen at the bottom here. Royal Rush Barracks, Bisu, best mini action queen shine. What do you think of this lineup this week? Mm, it looks very Protoss favored again, doesn't it? I mean, we might see a similar repeat of uh, last week where we uh, had a bit of an upset and teams not necessarily performing as we, we anticipated, but so far it's looking pretty Protoss dominant. Um, still not too sure about the queen pick. Barracks is an interesting choice, but I'm really happy to see Shine. He's a bag of builds kind of guy and uh, might have some interesting stuff to show us today. Maybe it's a bit cheesy. Yeah, Shine always an interesting pick to have in the KCM. Um, I wonder what he's going to pull out here on Blitz Y specifically because it's not a very good map. I th I feel for just standard Zerg play, the bottom left is really hard to hold uh, with just pure Lurker and uh, Sunken Colony. Like you can't do really... A, there's no easy way to do something like a, a crazy Zerg, you know, straight into Ultralist right. transition. I, I've kind of experimented myself a little bit with taking the center left and trying to hold that, but it seems a little bit too close to the Terran. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any really easy option here. Usually it's this high ground catwalk that you take as your third, but that, that doesn't feel too good either. It, even that's kind of expanding towards the Terran and giving him some rush timings that might leave that hatchery sniped. Yeah, it's uh, a difficult map for sure here for Zerg, but... There's a lot of more aggressive options, and we'll see if Shine wants to utilize one of those. So far, just getting into his 12 hatch here. Well, and 8 racks, or was this a, a racks after Supply Depot here? 8 racks. That was 8 racks. 8 racks going to be putting on that pressure early on. The Overlord of Shine, I think, will make it to this cliff, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's identified it yet, though, right? So, yeah, I mean... I do worry a little bit, like, you have to be very on top of things when you're dealing with A-Rex, and they'll wait for like 2-3 Marines, they'll come, and he just saw it, he just saw it! <gasps> he just barely saw it! That was timed out so well. I think Barracks had almost got it figured out when to exactly go so that he wouldn't be spotted by the Overlord, but in this case, Shine just barely caught the tailwind of that, so he will be pretty pretty able, able to respond to this very effectively. One drone coming out into the natural to start bullying this SUV, shaving off its HP, and then he can start to either pull up Lings, uh, make a sunken or just uh, pull more and more drones. So he's, you know, he was initially pulling the drones to deal with this and then realized that the bunker was going to go up regardless. So instead, he's going to just rotate one drone down here, maybe make a sunken and uh, try and go into links. Oh, great block there. Super annoying here for the Zerg player to get blocked right as you're putting on that sunken. Oh man, he just barely got it down, but. I think that Sunken not going to finish here. Lings will have to be produced. Uh, he's going to try and force them back away from that Sunken Colony. But, oh, he's going to lose the drone. This is really going bad for Shine, man. I think he didn't see the Marines coming with that Overlord. I think it was timed just perfectly enough for Barracks. Um, he could have seen it if his vi vision was on that Overlord at that moment, but I don't think it was. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think even though he had the op opportunity to see that, I don't think he did or at least didn't respond to it uh, appropriately. He is going for the 12 Ling option. So he's just going to pull up Lings here, let the hatchery get really low and then go in for a surround after the fact. Uh, I think he's got just barely enough to make that happen. But it's going to be close and he could still target down the hatchery after the bunker dies if he wanted to. Yeah, here we go. The bunker is probably going to die here, but there's two bunkers. And with the two bunkers here, oh, it's just barely out of range, but he can hit it from this one angle. Oh man, this is really, yeah. this is really frustrating here. Everybody who plays Zerg has uh, had a situation like this where you just barely can't break. And what you'd love to be able to do is not only uh, stop the the bunker, but if you can't stop the bunker, you have to at least get behind the bunker in order to stop more Marines from coming in and joining. Uh, the, the Marines at the front, um, but he wasn't able to block those from coming, so just keeps on loading up bunkers over and over and over again. The DPS gets way too high, and you can't even break with this number of lings. Dude, Shine is going to go for a desperate counterattack, but I don't think it's going to end up working. 
No, I mean, he just needs to block his ramp with a couple of SCVs and he'd probably be okay. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, of an, a bit of an issue for Shine going forward here. He could turn this into like a one-hatch lurker kind of play, but I don't think this is going to look very good for him in, in any respect. Like, it's so easy for Barracks to shut down anything that uh, Shine can leverage his way here. Yeah, here comes that lair. Let's see if we get a Hydra Den or not. Looks like he's probably just going to surround this bunker and kill it. But the amount of lings it's going to cost him to take this down is just... It's its not affordable right now. He's not really going to be able to uh, do anything on the map once he's actually killed this. He's hiding a drone out here, which maybe he can throw down a hatchery somewhere. But look, he's got no money. He's going to surround this. Picking off the marines, picking off the bunker. Looks like that will go down, but... So many links are going to be lost here. Now Barracks can move out with his Marines, and there's wow. no Ling Force to actually deal with that. I expected him to trade a little bit better than he did, to be honest with you. Like, I'm surprised that he even, like, left, uh, left was left with a Marine after that. It was, especially with Ling speed. Like, I, I would expect Shine to calculate that out a tiny bit better. As it stands, though, he's kind of, like, stuck onto one base going Spire. And this is going to be ever so easy for... Uh, barracks to deal with this i don't think yeah he's just gonna tap out i was just thinking to myself there's no way you can actually win with one hatch uh, muter here so i think that's gonna be all she wrote in is well a little bit of a disappointing showing here from shine in game number one but you know, sometimes that eight racks play if you don't see it coming can really get you um you really need that second overlord i think over top of the catwalk in time to see that drone pull too slow Shine goes down. Let's see our next TVP. It's coming right up. Well, that last game being a prime example of why Zerg players are going for early pools nowadays. The 8 racks is just so powerful. Yeah, I think you have to um, either 9 pull over pool or 11 pull in these situations to counteract that 8 racks BBS potentiality. And I wish I saw more Zergs go for that. It doesn't matter which one you go for, you get 11 pull into very fast two hatch muir timing or you could just you know play very standard nine 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 pool six six lings just play super eco after that yeah there's, there's lots of ways of approaching it um even over pool is uh pretty serviceable against terran especially if they open up eight racks so yeah i would like to see more zergs opting for that well the zergs at the very highest level are seem to be up opting for that more and more recently like a soul key hero uh even action these guys are going for much, much earlier pools than we would have seen like a year or two ago. Uh, almost a, a super rare build, actually, going for like a, a nine pool or uh, an over pool in Zerg versus Terran. Now has become kind of the standard just because of all this early aggression and just finding the way to get out of that play. If it's not that early, eight racks is the real tricky bit that some players haven't figured out. Yeah, I don't think uh, most players are comfortable walking those like fine tight ropes of navigating out of these early game shenanigans and I think that's kind of why there's so much value in going for it in the first place because even if you are getting some damage with the rush itself uh, you're also going to be doing a bit of a uh, mental damage to your opponent he's going to not like to have to play that way in the early game necessarily maybe he's not so good with his drone micro and on top of it all you'll also be slightly sub-optimized where you'd like to be usually because you're probably not going to be able to navigate those murky waters to optimization benefits are you so yeah it kind of have a, a kind of a knock-on effect for the rest of the game if you're not really like expert at uh, adjusting your play on the fly if you're not a big fan of these type of plays guys it'll come back around again i'm sure we'll get back to those uh, you know traditional macro plays uh, as players get more uh, comfortable with navigating those situations uh, have more experience with them and we'll eventually come all the way back around again to uh, just every single game 12 hatch like we used to i i, I believe that it'll happen in the future yeah, I mean, the meta is always constantly shifting and the way people have to approach the game is like kind of forced to switch. You can still do builds that are from like 2007 and still make them work today, which is kind of the exciting thing about this game. There's, there's really not many limits to what you can and can't do. It's just a matter of how optimal it is. It looks like the best kind of a little bit of pressure with this initial zealot. Maybe just forcing the SCV up the ramp just to uh, get the Marines in tactical retreat to the wall so he can start to open up this Terran base. Kind of make it look like he's got a lot more pressure coming than he actually has, but 
Meanwhile, Varric's actually going to be throwing down the eBay block on that natural, and the second Zealot's just coming across the map, so he's going to have to be relying on a goon to kill that, which will very heavily delay best uh, Nexus timing here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Varric's not going to throw down the factory. Looks like he maybe wants to just drop the CC. Mm -hmm. Wow. All yeah, right. Yeah. We'll go for the CC yeah, here, and uh, the second Zealot could be a real problem. Well, he's, he's feeling super confident right now, so he feels like he was going to kill this Zealot nicely, and then he's got enough Marines left over to kill this Zealot and then deal with the first Dragoon. And if that's the case, then we can delay our initial Vulture and tank. So he's feeling very confident in himself right now, but needs to be careful. Three of those Marines so desperately low! And now just a single Marine left alive, retreating to the main base for another one of its brethren to come and join it to finally clear up that uh, Zealot. But now we've got the Dragoon, only two Marines finished, and no Bunker on the way, so a little bit of a curious situation here for barracks as he gets this scb target down yeah i i'm not a fan of this play here from barracks i, I feel like this was predicated on uh, a few too many assumptions here that he was going to be able to kill that first and second zealot really really easily um which didn't end up happening he took a lot of damage uh, though he didn't lose any marines on the first zealot he ends up losing way too many on the second and he will get the bunker up but he took a little bit more damage than he would have liked. I guess he does have the CC up a lot faster than the CC or the, the Nexus of Best. But look at this. Best just going to find a route in here and start to harass the CC. And there's really not much that Barracks can do about this. Yeah, and he's got a bit of an Artosis SCV dancing to the right-hand side as well, so not able to actually get this building right now. Has to pull the boys and gonna have to unload this bunker to get all those goons. See, if he could have uh, caught those goons uh, behind the mineral line, it would have been a nice little pickup for Barracks there to isolate those goons and pick up some early kills. But as it stands, he's gonna get three goons raining down phase disruption shots on this bunker now, as the range has just finished up recently. Has his own Nexus on the way and potentially can force up quite a big repair bill out Barracks. He has got the machine shop now, so there is a tank coming out. I think I assume he, he didn't even make a vulture, but um, oh, it's DTs as well. Best is such a cheeky little gorilla here. Well, Best is gonna go for that DT play, but Barracks is gonna sneak in here. Can he get up this ramp? The probe actually pulls back away from the ramp. He would have loved to shut that down. He does just barely in time. Great job there by Barracks. Uh, by, by Best, excuse me. Barracks <laughs> denied that scouting. I mean, it's a great job by Barracks as well, getting that scout across the map in the first place through all that right. chaos, but not able to spot that. He's going to get potentially blindsided now with an armory on the way and, you know, a tank being forced out here first. He's not going to have mines right, uh, for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, he's gone for like, the siege expand, but this is not so good against um dt's guys there's no turrets there's no scans there's no mines and pretty much he's just in trouble right now like this dt can do a lot of damage to barracks he's he's going to start building some defenses now but he, he he's not got anything to block the dt from getting in the dt uh, just going to run by he's going to kill this tank for free uh and he's just probably going to tap yeah he's just going to tap out like i thought Ooh, that's rough well Best gonna continue to move forward here. Well, he's gonna move forward here. Um, damn. Well, we've already got two eliminations. It's only been about 10 minutes, guys. It's kind of crazy. Really lightning fast round of KCM here, but we're gonna jump into game number three now. Both Terran and Protoss testing the waters with some early aggression in the game so far. Both of them have worked, but uh, you can't keep doing that forever, can you, Shun? Oh, absolutely not. And uh, if, if the other players catch wind of like the way you want to approach your games, and that can also spell disaster for you, you want to always, always want to be switching up your gears, keeping your opponent guessing. Uh, unless you're just like an absolute god of execution, like say someone flashes ilk and you can kind of play the way they expect you to play, but you just do it so good that they can't even keep up with you. And they're just they're, they're suboptimal even when they, they know what you're doing. So unless you're that kind of good, then yeah, you kind of have to mix it up a little bit here. We'll see what kind of mix up comes from Best. He's got the pylon here at the front with the scout. I assume this is going to be for a forge fast expand here against action. Well, action will likely throw down his hatchery, but with the probe finding this with the first scout, okay, a pool gonna come down actually, so. Never mind, over pool here coming out of action. What? I like it. Did he, did he not see? 
Can you make a Wait, what's uh, No, I think he saw the edge of okay. the creep, right? He, he saw the edge of the creep and then backed away. So he doesn't want to reveal his location to... Uh, uh, yeah, so he's going to back away and check for other locations. Although, yeah, uh, the I way he's he scouting, played. though. Wait, wait, <laughs> what? I'm confused. He saw the creep, though, right? I'm not crazy. I think he saw the creep. I thought so. I, I think Best is, like, tripping right now. Like, what is going on? I think he's tripping because I yeah. swear he saw the creep with the probe. He's just the overlord now. <laughs> now he realizes. <laughs> he was sending a second probe up to the top right. Look at that. So, yeah, yeah a little bit of a miss scout there from Best. <laughs> it's going to cost him a little bit of mining time, so having this uh, second probe out on the map unnecessarily. Uh, you lose about between 50 and 70 minerals a minute for probes not mining, uh, assuming how optimal the, the saturation is and the pathing of the mineral. So, yeah, it can be a bit annoying to lose a lot of mining time early game. There's a potential probe worth of uh, minerals you've lost that one. Plus, he wasn't able to stop the hatchery from going down right away, right? Action got that immediately, yeah. and he wasn't able to optimize his build by seeing exactly what was popping out of the uh, the uh, eggs at the right time. Like if he just saw two lings pop out, he would probably have thrown down the nexus first uh, and True. gone into the the cannon after, because you know you can just pop that down, and, you know, get the gateway in the front uh, after the cannon, and then hold with a couple of probes. Uh, two two three probes will hold off a couple of lings if they're placed correctly. So, um. Yeah, not the best optimization here from Best. Just a little bit of a early scouting error here. It's going to cause him to be in not a bad position, but just not where he'd like to be with that first scout. Mm, yeah, I mean, Harambe is a bit, you know, he's a little bit inconsistent as far as his like intelligence and uh, ability to figure out these early game shenanigans. But I'm quite confident that he'll find his stride once he's uh, woken up uh, from his stirring, from his deep slumber in the jungle. Yeah, he's um, getting that information now. He's figured out where the base is, so just going to circle this hatchery for as long as possible. And Protoss players should, technically you should be able to keep this probe alive uh, until link speed is done. But Zergs, I mean, it's on them to keep on chasing, keep on harassing this, try to take shave off those shields little by little. And he's doing a pretty good job of it so far. He'd like to get rid of this probe as quickly as possible, but it's already seen the layer, so most of the information has been gleaned here. It looks like he does pick that off. Nicely done by action. Yeah, and we don't see any very quick second guess or anything, so it looks like it's not going to be like a super crazy Ogazer kind of thing where you pull a bunch of gas and make a crazy amount of mutilis right away. So it's probably going to be three hatch spy into six hatch hydra, we can assume. We don't know if he's going to make just five mutas to deal with the initial zealot threat and then go into pure hydra, or if he's going to uh, transition going into, like, say, ten um, mutas to either snipe high templars for the hydras, uh, or just go for, like, like I say, like an ogre zerg style attack where he goes in, like, ten mutas and scourge. We don't know exactly what action's going to go for here, but I imagine it's going to be more likely the, the sort of three hatch spire into six hatch hydra here. Yeah, everything looking really, really normal here for best as well. Um, starting that plus one just before five minutes here with the uh, Stargate and a Citadel here first. So, you know, he's going to have his Templar timing uh, at the, the pretty normal, about 8.30, 9 minutes, something like that. Um, and he should be, you know, just focusing on getting the information, making sure that there's nothing crazy coming out of action and getting up to that eight gateway count as quickly as possible here so he can take that third base. Now, looking at Retro as a late game ZBP map, um, this is one of those games, it's kind of like a first mover advantage map where if you're the one who gets the bases earlier than your opponent, yeah. you're gonna have a big advantage because attacking into any of these bases is very, very tough. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like that was the issue with like fighting spirit is like, yes, there's got such short rush distances and you can attack the high ground bases from two locations due to the double ramp. But the issue still remains. They've got spores, lurkers up the top of that ramp or cannons, high templars on top of that ramp. Very difficult to break it. So like you say, it's kind of like a first come first serve type situation. And you can kind of like dictate the pace of the game by what bases you take. Say the Zerg could be kind of crazy and take six o'clock and try and like uh, contain the Protoss out from that 
uh, ability to expand that way, so that then the protoss would be forced to expand uh, vertically or break that uh, base. So it can create some interesting dynamics in the game, uh, depending on where you do take these bases. We might see, you know, really early lurker here, although um, it's uh, it's not unheard of to go uh, for a big Hydra play with some mutas to try and snipe uh, high Templars. Well, you have to be able to mix that in, but I think that the the stronger play is probably going to be lurker and expanding into the top left. Uh, we'll, we'll, end, we'll see what ends up happening here. We already got a few mutas out, so maybe he's going to burst up to that like eight nine meter count and look for some of those snipes now dt gonna sneak in here to that center left of course there are overlords and a sunken is out but you can still get a few kills here before the sunken picks that off now he is gonna reveal his uh mutas to make sure that this dt doesn't get too many kills it gets about three kills but now with the dt or with the with the meta play uh being revealed here Bess is gonna be able to make some you know prudent uh changes to his base structure, adding on some more cannons, you know, adding on, continuing to build out those Corsairs. So, you know, a little bit of tit for tat there for from action and best. Yeah, I mean, the three uh, free drone kills is great compensation for going for the DT uh, any, anyway. And But then the scouting information of confirming the, the muta timing and the, the choice of tech from action is like uh, music to best ears right now. So he's going to be super comfy. He's going to uh, double down on making his cannons at his main and natural mineral line. He's going to go up to six or seven Corsairs of plus one. He's just going to sit pretty for a good while and eventually come out onto the map and start challenging this Muta Scourge with his uh, powerful Corsair fleet. Now, it's on best not to overcommit to the uh, anti mutalisk uh, tech here because we've only got five right. Mutas and there's, you know, just a small group of Scourge and he's switching into Hydra. So if he builds, you know, a couple of cannons at each base and he builds a bunch of extra Corsairs and then Hydras are everywhere, he could be in some trouble. Um, because his Templar are going to be lower in number and the Hydra count could be ridiculously high. Now we're going to fly into the main here. There's a little bit too many cannons, but he's looking for some Templar or some probes at the edge of the base that he can snipe. And it looks like he finds one. He's going to fly back out again. Bess is looking for that intercept. Let's see if he can catch it. Yeah, I mean, he goes... Uh, these days, you're going for seven Sairs instead of six because you're worried about the Zerg going uh, for plus one Carapace really quick. Ooh, does manage to get a few connections on those Corsairs, actually, with those Scourge. Uh, well done by Action there, getting some compensation. And he's going to sneak the Muters out without taking a single hit. Uh, I assume, unless he finds somehow these Corsairs have the star sense of a god and hunt down these mutas still. But yeah, so far, um, Action doing a good job of both getting uh, some compensation, killing a few of those uh, heavy gas Corsairs early, and then also getting the mutas out on the map still alive so he can use those still. So, so far, Action kind of dotting his I's, crossing his T's, and looking pretty good despite getting away that early intel. Yeah, we've seen best uh, star sense so far. He didn't even know that there was uh, a base in the bottom left after scouting that uh, creep. So I don't think he's going to be able to find those mutas. He does do a little damage there in the middle, but they are going to escape for the most part. And those mutas can come in very handy later on to shut down uh, bases, you know, in the top right. If you're trying to sneak a base up there and the mutas arrive, you can kill off all the cannons, prevent basically any damage can stop cannons from coming up. So as long as you have something roaming the map, making sure that bases aren't coming up, you should be able to shut them down and at least force, you know, a uh, an extra bit of army to go up there to, to help the cannons to finish. Yeah, look how, my, look how zealot heavy that best is right now. Uh, he's trying to kind of have a little gambit here, like if, if that he can just catch action with his pants down when there's not that many mutas out on the map, when there's not quite yet a critical mass of hydras in position to deal with. Oh, he's going to be intercepting this drone transfer, killing at least three of those drones is a great pickup for best as well. Now just barreling into the nine o'clock position to kind of threaten an attack there, and then rotating to the uh, northwest quadrant yet again. But look at this action has his lurker tech pretty on time though so he can just look a block this ramp just fine and he's not really going to be phased by that meanwhile teching straight into hive even preemptively before best to start to set up this six o'clock base so he's anticipating just allowing best to go three four base anyway and he's just going to say i'm just going to sit back get four gases go straight into hive and take you to a macro game and that kind of suits action just fine here the only problem with that is, is these tight corridors which can just become like storm havens yeah, this is really, really standard stuff for this map. I've played this game a hundred times on Retro. Um, 
where the Protoss is taking their third. You're taking another uh, main base as the Zerg player. Uh, you're going to have to sunk and push out towards your own ramp here at the natural. And you have to basically defend in uh, three different places. The high ground at the center left, uh, your other main base high ground, and you have to cover that uh, natural. So with that much splitting, the Protoss player has a good chance of ramming their entire army into one of these three locations. And you're just kind of biding your time hoping that you can get uh, Nidus up uh, as quickly as possible so that you can jump your units between all three and hopefully prevent you know a bust in any of those locations now we're gonna have a drop here into the main um this has been completely shut down by uh, action he's got the uh the mutas here to help out a little bit some lurkers and hydras this is a perfect response from him i guess he was really expecting something a, a move like this from best but this is really well handled by action. Saying, I'm kind of getting like nerd chills from watching action play. Like he's, he doesn't seem like he's doing a lot, but look at the supplies right now. He's 149 to 100, uh, just now gone to 150 supply. He's actually ahead of best in supply. Like, this guy's macroing like a madman right now. Action is like one of the best in the business at being an aggressive macro zerg. Yet in this game, he's like just got pure macro. So he's really doubled down. He's kind of staying on his side of the map only, just spreading like a virus right now ready to explode out onto the map in a big way in the coming stages of the game. Meanwhile, Best now frantically trying to set up a fourth base in response to catch up with the economic curve of the Zerg here. He will soon run rampant. Well, I'm looking at this, and I think that we might see Best just shove everything up this ramp here uh, at center left. It's not as well defended as the other two locations. There's only two lurkers here, and there's no sunkins, no spores. He can just storm up this ramp, and then maybe... With all of these Dragoons and Zealots, if he can get up the ramp with some Storm, then he can defend the other ramp uh, where, you know, Action is going to be rallying into. And if he gets up on that base, the, the game is basically over. You just kill three hatches, um, you deny this base, and then you take a base here at the center right. He's not going to do it, but that is a way that Zerg can lose the game. Even if they're at a macro advantage, if you get into any of those locations and start to deal that damage, Things fall apart very, very quick for the Zerg. Yeah, actions that action was actually trying to bait that kind of play as well. Like if you saw how his lurkers were set up at the nine o'clock, they were very deep, like anticipating him to come up the ramp and then realize that there's a kill box already set up at the top of the ramp with the links kind of acting as a, a screen to buy a little bit of time. So it seems like action was anticipating that play as well. Like I think he's very well aware of like how he can lose this game in this current stage. He's doing a great job of having uh, anti-drop defense in the main base. The Corsairs are still probing the main a few times over so they can pick up any of those overlords but unable to do so there is a small contingency of hydras and mutas in the main base to thwart any kind of like drop plays or harassment by the air so so, so far action dotting his eyes crossing all his t's and looking like he's nearly maxed out already 190 supply best gonna go for some poor man recalls with like a, a little shuttle fleet here it seems and has realized that maybe one shuttle is not going to do the trick he's gonna have to you utilize quite a few shuttles and the he also has quite a few high tempers to load up into these, so a lot of storms will be available to him, uh, moving probably down to the, the southwest quadrant map now. There's the Defiler. We're past the 14-minute mark, so Defilers are a total possibility here. 15 minutes is when you're going to have those upgrades finished. Drop here into the main, but at the same time, Action going to hit the 6 o'clock. He's going to try and defend with whatever he's got coming out of these hatches, but the rest of his army is heading into this base, and he's probably going to break it. A lot of drones just went down, but trading bases right now is pretty darn good for action. Now, can he hold on to the center left while this is all happening? Bess is just running up this ramp, and this position that I was mentioning earlier that didn't look like it was properly defended definitely is going to get broken here. Can Bess hold on back at home, kill the main base and the center left? Oh, this is this is getting really crazy, man. I thought we were going to go into a super late game, but this base trade situation with action running in the natural lot of lurkers coming through here. The Reaver could be clutch, but it's out. Uh, it doesn't have any scarabs. It just popped. It's got no scarabs right now, so it can't keep itself alive. It's just barely staying alive for the moment, but there it is. It goes down. This base is going to fall. We're setting up everything in the top left. He's building a spawning pool in the top left right now, Shun. 
Yeah, he's, he's preparing for the, the base trade scenario where he's going to lose everything. He knows he needs to just keep production going as long as possible. He has a Nidus Canal set up so he can maybe squeeze the, a few units out and save them from the bottom left as well. He has enough army supply left over to still beat this army head on. He's trying to get out onto the map with some of these defilers so that he's got more utility out on the map to utilize with his army. When he, he's he's going to kill this main base off of this, but then he needs to still kill the army that's out on the map because he won't be able to break 3 o'clock without uh, defiler support. And he's worried that after being reduced to one base economy that he won't be able to necessarily keep up with best anymore so he needs to make sure he's got enough utility out in the way of these defilers to still be able to combat this army with some plagues in the coming stages yeah it looks like uh best is actually gonna break through over there oh my god look at all the cannons he's gonna throw down one dark swarm and that's gonna be enough to actually break through all these cannons however this army making its way over here to the top left. That could be a killing blow here for action. He's got one Dark Swarm, a few Lurkers. Some links are popping up, but look at how little money action has. There's opposite problems right now between action and best. We've got tons and tons of money here for best, uh, but no production structures left over. We've got a few production structures left here for action, but no money at all. So he's just buying that time, trying to mine a little bit more to get these production structures rolling here. All right, Best trying to push up this ramp. Can he break this final base? The base in the center right is going down. He's actually going to lose, I think, in a base trade. He's got one pylon in the top right right now. Does he have enough to break this? And, you know, uh, get the kill on all the buildings before... Uh, action eliminates him. This is going to be so close. Yeah, this is insane. I think I, th I think actually if Action can find these buildings, he will eliminate him uh, much faster. I just don't think he will necessarily be able to find the, all the pylons. He built a second pylon in the top right. Has enough money to start. Oh, there it is. Up Look, the Ling finds it. The Ling finds it, and the other Ling has stopped. Spotted the probes. The probes now dead. Action now has a, a game-winning move where he can just uh, run up and kill us. Remember, Action has a gas in the extractor. bottom left. Extractor. Extractor. Oh, yeah, the extractor. Oh, the extractor in the bottom left. He has a gas still. So he's got this he's got this in the bag saying oh man we've got a shuttle over here what does he have in there oh he picked up a probe oh he picked up a probe he's got oh, he's 2000 got minerals oh he's got, oh, he's got, got a scourge oh, he's got one pylon he's got one pylon oh the gas in the bottom okay. left is so big he's got to run for it the shuttle can make it out of here guys it's faster than the scourge the other Scourge are moving to intercept though. He's got the star sense to hunt this down. He's moving on intercept course. He's on the vector to intercept it. And he also wants to stop him from spotting the gas as well. So he's going to try and fly down from the gas to deny vision of the gas. No, he yes. lost it. He got oh. it. Action's in base. Oh, there's this hatchery in the top right as well. <laughs> oh, and he's got everything. That, this is it. Action's got it. He brings everything to the top right. Throws down a hatchery. He's got two drones to mine. Oh, this is this is perfect from this is perfect play from action uh, Realizing that he's doesn't need to even fight this army. Just throw down the hatchery up here Bring everything together and just leave a few units to kill off these last uh, couple of buildings and Look at that action Beautifully done. What an wow. insane insane game GG, absolutely insane. Well, yeah, just, just just a quick uh, reiteration there for everyone who's maybe not quite a familiar with StarCraft. The, the objective of the game, ultimately, even though it doesn't usually come down to that, is you have to destroy all your opponent's buildings. So as long as you've got one building left over, you're still in the game there. And really well thought out by action to identify a very um, game-winning state, which would also involve not having to engage the Protoss army head-on. And uh, really stellar stuff from action there. Beautiful game sense. Beautiful game sense. I'm kind of getting no chills. Dude, what? Oh, how crazy is it? If there, if he had just managed to drop that one pro before the shuttle uh, died, he could have built a nexus in the bottom left and brought his whole army yeah. down there, and we could have had a complete reset. What the heck, guys? <laughs> I can't believe that he didn't manage to drop that, but um maybe we were spared like a you know hour and 30 minute game of just wackiness i don't know um that would have been really interesting to see though he had so much money he yeah. could have built two nexuses uh even yeah, like 2k minerals yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's crazy uh, but action barely afforded that hatchery as well so action was like barely in the game still so yeah, yeah. wow um that was one of the best games I've seen in KCM so far. That, that, that was a crazy, crazy game. Down to the wire. Um, it looked like a game where we could have seen, like, mine out uh, before that base trade. But 
the base trade was absolutely wild. Usually, Zergs don't win in a situation like that, but with the, the great use of the uh, Dark Swarm, he was able to break through everything really, really well done. Yeah, yeah it's, what was so impressive was that he had the sequencing to do so many things in such a small space of time. Like Usually it takes the Zerg so long to get their army out on the map attacking all these multiple locations at once. It just yeah. takes too long to get it all done, but, but action made it look easy. He was hitting 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock just popped like a, a zit. Then he was hitting the natural already before 6 o'clock was even dead, already on top of the rally point, getting on top of the river before he could even build scarabs. And then, and then had the defilers running out from the top left to, to be able to support the lings and killing 3 o'clock. It's just so fluid, and everything was just like lined up, and the stars aligned for him to just destroy best without even having to worry about fighting the army at all. Yeah, absolutely. It is very difficult to make all those things happen at the same time, but action, king of multitasking in this game, absolutely deserved win there. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to see. <laughs> Again, I would have loved to see that probe get dropped out, but it is what it is. It is what it is. We're going to go into our next game. Ah, uh, well, we were denied the greatest game of all time there by uh, Best not dropping that pro, but <laughs> it was still a fantastic game. Oh, it was a beautiful game, so, and certainly livened me up after the, the a bit of a disappointing couple of uh, entries to the series. Yeah, we, uh, we had to stop and talk about that game for like an extra 10 minutes in between here because there was just so much wackiness <laughs> that happened. Um, but... We're going to spare you guys that. We're jumping into this one here. We've got Rush versus Action Rush. Starting off with an 8 racks in bottom left. I mean, we've seen this all before. I mean, Rush is doing what he does best. Rush, right? I mean, if you saw this guy's ID on the ladder and he didn't know about the pro gamer Rush, I'm pretty sure you could start to figure out maybe what kind of, like, range of play is in his wheelhouse. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he's got a pretty wide range of play, but yeah, this is this is just so popular right now. It's so good right now. Um, we're going to see a 12 hatch out of action as well. So, I mean, if uh, Zerg players are going to continue to do this play, why not? Um, why not go for this? It's it's just so strong. It's one of those things where um, it, 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 it actually reminds me of a comment that I got on YouTube recently where someone was complaining about how... Uh, Zerg players can Hydra rush you and still play a macro game out of it. Then they're saying, well, an all-in should be an all-in. You can't macro out of it. But there are so many different strategies like this one where it feels super all-in or it can be super all-in, but you can absolutely yeah. macro out of it. But here's the thing. If this was all-in, then why not just go BBS? You know what I mean? Like, mm. it, 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 people are not looking at the nuances of the game enough. And like with the Hydro bus thing, well, is it an all-in? Or did he like also make a fourth hatchery while doing the Hydro bus? That's right. the whole point, right? Like it, 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 it's, it's, They're designed in such a way that you do have transitional points even if you don't do critical damage and that's how the builds are designed like just by forcing cannons you're getting value out of your hydra still for example mm -hmm. so even if you can't technically bust the protoss player maybe you can you know soft contain him and transition because you made, made him make enough cannons that he's not going to have a strong enough gateway time to punish you so you've got enough time to drone up still so yeah people need to look at the nuances of the, the builds a little bit more well we've got these uh drones being pulled and actions handling this very well so far he's gonna pull right through just barely saving that one drone Really good uh, drone control overall here from Action. He's bought, I think, enough time uh, to to deal with this without too much trouble. He might lose one drone, but he's going to have some uh, links popping out here soon, and he's tracking down these Marines uh, as they're coming to assist. The bunker is too far back to threaten the hatchery, so I think Action's done this perfectly. Yeah, basically he'll make the first bunker really far away from the creep and he'll try and make the second bunker in range of the hatchery But actions trying to buy enough time that he can't make the bunker as far forward as you'd like to because the creep spread So yeah, we see the second bunker as more of a fallback point for the Marines to skirmish now So this is like a kind of suboptimal position for rush The one thing he's got as compensation is that these four drones are not mining out on the map right now So there's a lot of lost money for action there Pro approximately about 200 minerals already and that's gonna go up all the way it's like 300 400 minerals easily by the time that he's had any chance at surrounding these bunkers we've done some sort of like uh a trick here to get out a few more like an extractor trick or something to get a few more links out on the map but he's gonna pull all the links together kill off these marines and the drones will slide safely by this is just textbook exactly how you're supposed to do it here as action 
uh, because he was able to deny more Marines getting those bunkers, breaking the bunkers just so much easier here, and Rush will have to fall back. I mean, he f did force a lot of lost mining time, as you said. He forced a lot of Lings out as well, but this is not what you're looking for with the eight racks. You want to get more than just one drone uh, compensation here. Oh, usually what happens when you got eight racks is even if the, the Zerg survives, you've kind of pushed the relative timings back by about a minute for both players. So mm. the, the Lair's about a minute later, the Muters will be about a minute later, and you know conversely, the Terran's gas will be, and tech will be about a minute later. So you're kind of just pushing the whole scale of the game just back a whole minute-ish. And depending on how well you fared in that early gambit, how much you'll be pushed back relative to the other player. So in this case, action was pushed back slightly slightly further than usual because he had four drones not mining for so long he couldn't quite afford the lair around four minutes so he made it around like say 420 430 instead so he slightly pushed further back than he would like to be but still in a very playable position yeah absolutely and with this number of lings here he can't really push out as rush i mean he will eventually be able to with the marines and medics that are going to be hitting the field but i don't think he can come across the map to actually force sunkins here so uh, action just gonna sit back, keep that scouting information going, getting these overlords into really nice spots here. He's got one over the natural, uh, one over this high ground here, uh, in between his base and Rush's base, and he's gonna have it lings just spread out everywhere, making sure that he knows exactly when this push out is coming. His spires on the way here, third hatch in the main. Uh, I, I think he's in a pretty reasonable spot uh, from this mm -hmm. position. You, you can't hope for much more than that with the eight racks and the bunker actually finishing. No, and he's, he's going to go for like the hybrid uh, way to deal with the bio push as well of like having just like one sunken with like a, a pool of lings to kind of make use of the, the leftover lings from clearing out the bunkers as well. So he's going to try and not make as, as many sunkens as possible for as long as possible. He does need a second sunken um, before his mute is hatched though because he will no way will he have enough lings and to hold this bio push with just one sunken mm. he doesn't have link speed so he'll definitely have to go into at least two sunkens here because the, the mutas will just be too slow yeah it looks like you're right um i was thinking he might not have to do this but it really does appear like uh rush is gonna get this timing out he doesn't have the ling speed either which makes it so much harder to do counterattacks like this and to actually slow down these marines he is slowing this down by a lot but he's not getting much value out of this uh, aside from that you know slow down on these marines he should have been able to like run in maybe pick off a few marines maybe run past those fire bats um, but in this case he's just gonna lose all of them and all he's gonna get is that these marines are not across the map and he already built the sunken colonies anyway so it's it's not much of a compensation yeah, but the issue now is that Rush is going to get away with not making much turrets. Like, he's going to make, like, two, three turrets in his natural, not make anything at his main or racks for quite some time. He's going to assume that these mewers will be out. Yeah, he, like, he assumes the mewers will come down to chase these firebats, for example. And now he's going to use this small window to not have to make turrets as early. So he's squeezing out all of his production and tech before having to make any turrets in his main at all, which is going to give him such a huge advantage in this game, only having to make a few turrets in his natural. Yeah, that's right, and... There's hardly any mutas out here just yet anyway, so even if there were, if even if they were able to dive in uh, on this low number of turrets, we've still got enough marines here to push everything back. Rush is really optimizing his build right now, and keeping this small group, this small contingent of marines out on the map is forcing action to not even try to dive into the main at all. Mm. Yeah, one thing also to note is that usually depending on where the Zerg has spawned will dictate where you want to prioritize making turrets. For example, the natural expansion is the closest base en route from the Zerg to the Terran. That's why we saw him prioritize making turrets in the natural only initially. So as a Terran player, you've got to be very mindful of that, where you are aligned to the Zerg and very heavily dictate where you need to prioritize making those turrets. We're going to have a really hard time here uh, surrounding and killing this marine medic force, but getting behind it is the first step. We want to try and make sure that this can't be reinforced. That's so many marines, though, already. It's a really scary marine force here. Uh, he's going to have to keep tracking this, maybe get a few you know, free pickoffs here on some of these marines before he engages. Otherwise, he's just not going to be able to clear this, and Rush is going to be able to put so much pressure on the top, uh, top right, that expansion. Yeah, 
Definitely. Uh, one thing I just wanted to note is that you see how um, barracks's barracks are staggered, like they're kind of like off-centered a little bit. Hmm. Now, a, a, lot, a lot of players will have different styles of how they build their buildings, purely based on how comfortable they macro. So sometimes they'll build them in a square if they're comfortable with like moving their mouse up and down, left and right. But a lot of players like to move their mouse more more diagonally, so they'll like uh, do this like kind of like uh, offset, like we saw uh, barracks doing it. How many muters that action is shaving off? It's beautiful muter micro as well, 450. The APM, like yeah, if you're like really intensely mute and microing while also macroing back at home, it's very easy to go upwards of 500, uh, maybe even 550 APM when you're absolutely playing your absolute best. So it's really scary to see action play at that level for so long. Usually you only like spike at that kind of APM for like a very brief like 30 second minute period as a foreigner player, but seeing a pro gamer do it for like extended periods of time, like he's, he's going up to 500 APM with his mute link control right now. And he's been able to maintain this for so long. And look how he, he's so behind. And look how cleanly he's dealing with this huge bio ball in the center of the map. He has nothing in the top right to defend apart from this mute link force that's just controlling the map right now. Well, I didn't see anything clean about that hold except for the fact that he caught the the reinforcing army i think he missed like three shots with the mutas as he was trying to micro there it's uh it's looking a little rough he is gonna possibly be able to overwhelm this force here in the middle it's still a little bit of an open question here whether uh, he can actually kill this off or not uh, getting a few picks like that are, is really going to help out a lot, but he's uh, allowing this reinforcement. That's the issue. Yeah, this yeah. reinforcement wave to actually make its way over here to uh, the the main force of Rush. Now we do have some lurkers here already, so I guess action will be able to hold on, but he's not going to be able to wipe out that force like I think he intended originally. Yeah, no, he, he hasn't got like enough forces to, to kill this Bible anymore, especially he made a big mistake of not catching the reinforcing stream of Marines. He did he did send his lings down to check for that, but not further enough to actually uh, be able to deny that. If he if he'd got his mutiling down there to kill that like contingency of Marines that was moving along the southern threshold there, he probably would have been in a really advantageous position. As it stands now, there's enough Marines out on the map to maintain uh, total uh, map control for the time being. So Rush is kind of going into the main phase of the game where he's the one dictating map control containing the zerg threat and then laying siege to the zerg and action now will not be able to get much more done with these muters here there is it's still a potent force of 10 muters but we have a radiates available and this bible as strong as it is he won't find much more value for these muters now on citadel there's mm. kind of a problem as a zerg player um, taking this upper right it's not a traditional ramp uh, this is kind of a weird ramp where you've got like a, a little ridge high ground that comes right. down. It can be pretty easy to break as the Terran player. Um, if you get all your forces like right on the other side of that, stim, wait for everything to heal up and then just run and split as you come through. You can just overwhelm a stack of lurkers that's sitting there waiting. Uh, it, it's it's uh it's something that's happened to me multiple multiple times but we have defilers out now and it looks like consume is done so maybe that's not going to be an issue here it's just something to mention that uh this is not an easily defendable position here uh the top right most players these days are actually taking the natural rather than this main base uh, because of that yeah and uh, actions big, with that in mind actions gone for this idea of like having the lurkers further back but you can actually run by with the marines if there's not anything to catch them and, and stop them from running by so you need to be careful having your lurkers far back like this as well and uh looks like action though was in position to catch this these two drop ships with a pair of scourge and the vessels were kind of scared away a little bit but actually i don't know i feel like the muters were out of position there so there was actually a little bit of a window for rush to get something done he just would have had to commit like like losing a dropship for free maybe but uh yeah i don't know like i feel like so far rush is kind of like very hesitant to make any plays and he just wants to expand and then i guess he's actually got the right thing in mind here because if he can contain the action on three gases while also double expanding and taking the third gas he will be in a really great position so i think he's realized that he doesn't actually need to commit to this gambit with the drop ships just yet and instead he can just kind of chill here yeah i think he's got a great position right now there's no reason oh he picks off the drone really nice uh targeting there yeah um i, I think he realizes there's there's no real reason to uh to take a risk like that he's already at a pretty good advantage right now he's got the fourth coming up here he's got a huge bio force 
Uh, he's kind of contained everything, and getting value out of these vessels is all he really needs to do right now. Just keep on spamming out those irradiates, and maybe he waits for another two more drops. And as the fourth base is being peppered by those irradiates, maybe he can come in with the drop and hit, you know, the top right or something like that. Maybe he can hit that main base. Uh, or, you know, drop on the other side of the natural and, you know, hit from two sides, something like that. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. He's also got such a large standing army, so that um, when he decides to, he has a very uh, strong chance at breaking this fourth base. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, this is actually quite great for Rush because he has so such a large vessel fleet that hasn't been challenged yet. Like, unless action can start to chain plagues right now on this bow blob, then I feel like Rush has a strong chance just to outmuscle him. Yeah, he's even adding on the fire bats. So this is something that you do uh, when you're a little bit ahead is you just start spamming out fire bats. And mm -hmm. that way the Zerg player can't stack their lurkers. If they stack their lurkers, fire bats could just rip through them with the D Matrix on. Um, if you spread your lurkers, you're forced to spread your lurkers because there's fire bats there. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. He might lose that. Okay. Uh, back to what I was saying. <laughs> if he <laughs> spreads his lurkers, then you can get irradiates on all of them. The point of stacking them up is that you can't irradiate all of them at the same time. But look at this. He has to spread them all. He can come in, throw down, you know, five irradiates here on all of the lurkers as they're popping out. And then, boom, he, you know, he can uh, break through that position here in a, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, and looks like Rush is being a little bit tricksy with these dropships, but actually it's really on top of it. They're going to be catching one of these dropships, it looks like, for free. The other one not able to unload in time to save uh, the dropship, so he was a little bit slow at reacting to that one. And look at the Muter Scourge, be catching this one as well, so great pickups from action there. But Rush is so far ahead in supply right now, though, 180 to 108 for action, so still has such a large force to utilize. It's a shame that you couldn't get anything done with those dropships, but it's kind of expected of how many Muters and Scourge were out on the map. Map. Uh, action hasn't like kind of made any cuts whatsoever like he's kind of got everything set up to be more or less tight as a, a duck's butt right now he's doing a great job here keeping everything sewn up and uh maybe a small error here oh, whoa he's though. gonna go for the hang nineties. Though. hang on though wait a minute oh, no. rush really just breaking through right here right now no lurkers at that location action I mean, this is this is just textbook rush, man. He finds the the location wow. that has the least defense, and he's gonna break through. I, I mean, action was holding on in every different location, just barely for so long. He does get in there. Okay, he does manage to clear that out just barely, but it's the constant irradiates that have been lowering that uh, lurker number for so long. The reason, it, which opened up that position, right? He just didn't have the mm. lurker number anymore. He's saving up maybe for some extra uh, ultras to come out. Now he's got some more lurkers here. The ultras are out finally, but they're just not in high enough numbers to actually do anything at this point. He's gonna be able to stop this. It looks like just barely. Oh God, he's attacking the egg instead of the, the Marines there. He's trying to try and break through once again. Lurkers are dying here under the Dark Swarm. Nice Ooh. plague there. Holding back once again. Is Action actually going to hold on? I thought he was just about to die. Well, if you ask Artosis, he's got enough supply to be basically immortal and invincible. So it looks like he's going to cling on to life for just a moment. But look at the map. He's setting up another base in the top left. And it looks like, is that factories that he's building up there? Probably. He's either, he's looking, yeah, it looks like he's building some production up in the top left as well. So it's either going to be like a big tech, uh, mech switch as well to kind of guarantee like being able to spend all this resources and like just like squeeze action out of the game, even if he does survive. A razor trick going to be coming down, testing the waters. He should have borrow upgrade by this point, but there's a chance that he skipped out on it to save on gas and yes he has skipped out on it so we'll be losing a few of those drones as well so it's a little bit unfortunate for action because you should have bar upgrade by about 18 minutes into the game for sure so yeah a little bit unfortunate for him that he's not uh, picking up i guess he thought he had to make cuts somewhere due to how bad the game state has gone from the early but i really don't think there's an excuse to not get borrow still yeah well he's gonna lose a lot of drones there and look at the money right now in actions bank he's got like he had less than 100 there for a moment now at 150 minerals i mean getting irradiated constantly means he's constantly having to replace all of these really uh, important units he's not been able to reduce that uh, vessel count at all and we're gonna see bcs hit the field here really really soon i imagine because there's just no reason to not start adding them on. You're going to force so many more Scourge, and he's already not able to afford Scourge to pick off the vessels anyway. Right. 
Yeah, and, and Russia is now max, so like he's going to want to trade units just to free up supply to make BC. So even when he's losing units, it's going to be betting, benefiting him in some way. So not not much can go wrong for for Rush right now. Uh, and Action's kind of in a lot of trouble. And these BC, BCs will sh not only shut down gas mining at these bases, but force Lava and Scourge to be dedicated to Scourge to actually deal with um, the, these BCs, so he'll have such a gas deficit, he will not be able to continue the production of Ultras, Defilers and Lurkers that he needs to just not die, let alone win the game. Yeah, there you go, some more Scourge going down as well, you can't afford to be losing Scourge for free right now, you need every single one of them to deal with these BCs that are starting to fly in, it looks like running into the top right. GG is called by Action Rush, just overwhelming. And a great play. I mean, we almost had Action hold on there. It was such a tightrope that he was walking. He stopped the, the dropships from coming in and everything, but his position was just a little bit too shaky there, and Rush was able to exploit him continuously throughout the mid-game. The late-game comes, and Rush is so so far ahead able to extend that lead so so much that there's just no hope left for action and he gets taken down another zerg player bites the dust here is zerg gonna get go extinct first or will queen be able to bring it back he hasn't been showing us the greatest results as of late but just in this last week of kcm he did show some pretty good performance so Hopefully he can pull a miracle here. Now we're going to jump into our next game. It's going to be Rush versus Bisu or Mini. It's coming up next. We've arrived on Troy here for Mini versus Rush. Dude, this map is such a pain in my butt. It's uh, highly Protoss favored, I would say. Don't you, don't you agree? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Protoss can just go for a two gate play straight up and really frustrate you. That will control the openings you'll want to go for no matter what. You can kind of gamble and assume you won't go for double gate, but you can always assume that he'll go for some kind of pressure here. At least one forward gateway worth of zealot pressure. And maybe even the possibility of killing these uh, assimilators kind of puts the the onus on you to do a solid defense so he doesn't have enough zealots left over to just shut you in your base afterwards as well. So you need to be much more forward thinking as a Terran here. And we do see this forward pylon, so that's either going to be a nexus first or a, a double gateway. Yeah, it's... It's kind of crazy. It's a it's a it's a wild part of brood war, uh, and especially Korean brood war that we have these wild maps that can be like the decider, the decision maker um, between you know who's gonna be the champion of the world, like <laughs> you know ASL finals or something like that. We might have something, some situation where we have to play on Troy to decide who's gonna be the you know take home the the million dollars or whatever the the grand prize is the 25k or something like that um could be the difference between winning and losing a lot of sports you know they want to eliminate all different types of kind of weirdness to when you're trying to figure out who's the best in the world but uh it's, it's funny that in starcraft we have this yes but we do want to have a wild map just one of them thrown in we want the all the normal very like standard maps and just one wacky crazy map that everybody has to adapt to <laughs> yeah it's kind of funny because we, we it's almost unavoidable that we have a situation like that and uh, a lot of people do get frustrated and they like complain about it and like oh why do we have to have like this map in the map pool or whatever but honestly like i think it's a it's a good thing for the game to kind of like throw in the the wild card kind of map into the pool and just force players to have to adapt at least a little bit you know not to let the meta get too stale and bogged down and yeah i think i think i really do appreciate these kind of i i think in, in a way it's important to have a few imbalanced maps and this two this two uh gate pressure like i thought we'd see at a mini is going to do a lot of damage to rush uh, here unless he's like really on top of his micro and i don't think he's going to be able to handle the pressure that mini's going to be able to afford him yeah it's gonna get scary it's gonna get really scary here in a couple of uh couple of seconds one the second two zealots are arrive and the marines are still fighting here in the main he's gonna lay down the bunker which uh, will change the math quite a bit here however there's only gonna be one marine for that bunker and there's gonna be two zealots to hit it so he might actually just lose the bunker here hmm. 
Well, I'm not sure he's... He, he, he get was, in, get uh, in! Oh, 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 what? <laughs> Come on, Rush! You're better than that, my guy. What are we doing? He's distracted with the Zealot in the main base, which is unnecessary anyway, because it's low HP. He shouldn't be necessarily... He wants to gun down that th that Zealot in the main before it joins up with these other two, but he's, uh, he's he needs to prioritize things a little bit better here. Uh, he's losing too much now, and things will run away from him, and he will not be able to clean this up cost-efficiently at all. And more and more Zealots will just run by the bunker. They won't even lose much HP for doing so because the Marine's dying without even getting into the bunker. He's doing a pretty good job of trading with what he's got, but he's just got such a deficit to work with right now that with the SCVs coming off the line, he's not even mining that much right now. No, he's not, and he's losing all of his Marines. Yeah, if he had that second, uh, that second Marine in the bunker, it, that would mean that a lot more of this shields and HP would have been shaved off the incoming Zealots as they're making their way past, but now they're getting into the main with you know plenty of shields and health um and there's there's just no way to to balance this out rush is gonna tap out and another quick game so we had you know some really good games or we had a, a couple of really good games there but now we're back to the original pattern that started us off in this week with just yeah. players getting eliminated instantaneously um <laughs> going down to these really quick rush plays well, the trend might continue. We might have like another quick game and then two really long games. So I, I reckon maybe the thing that I said before will come to pass, and BC will have like a, a, a quick, a quick stomp out here. Um, sorry, a Queen versus um, Queen versus Mini. I think Queen will do a quick stomp out, uh, um, and then I, I think that we'll have see like two really like kind of long games from BC maybe. All right, Shun stares deep into his crystal ball. Just uh, sensing our future here. It's going to be a quick game between Mini and Queen. Uh, with Queen taking the win. Let's see if that does come to pass. We've got Mini here. Starting in the top right. Radeon. A very standard map. Much, much better than uh, Troy. <laughs> for sure. But uh, it, oh, yeah. it is nice to have those maps. And it just it is savage how strong 2Gate is on that map. Oh yeah, it's brutal. And it's so good that you kind of have to go for it almost, I feel. Like, it's kind of weird if you don't go for a 2Gate on that map, is, is all I will say. So you kind of, as a Terran player, I feel like you should play assuming a 2Gate no matter what, just because of how strong the build is. Mm. Well, Mini here, gonna throw down that Forge and Double Scout. But, um... We've just got Queen going for a very standard build here. He's going to miss the probe, unfortunately, so not going to know immediately that there's uh, you know, Mini up in the top right-hand corner. He will see it now, so he should just alter the trajectory. This is, this is really confident from Queen. He went for a 12 hatch, not 11 hatch, so he's really confident in his um, anti-cannon rush and dealing with uh, Mini's gateway first. Uh, Mini will block in this one probe, uh, so now Queen will shuffle down another couple of drones to uh, try and drill over there. Mini will also make another pylon to block this spot here. Uh, and then we'll try and put down the cannon when it's time. So he does get ooh, ooh, does get the, the cannon down already, actually, wow. with the forge finishing up. So, yeah, and not able to get in there with any additional uh, drones. So he will also kill... Um, kill this one oh he can't quite reach it from that angle i don't think anymore so yeah but he's doing enough damage on these drones as they're coming over one at a time that they can't duel the probe so this cannon will go up i think he, he's done enough damage with the, the drone to be annoying but the, the links can't really get back there and kill that anytime soon so i think mini uh, mini is looking uh, pretty good right now yeah he's looking very good one drone not enough to kill a cannon um he is gonna actually cancel the hatchery here wow Interesting. So Queen going to go ahead and snag down at bottom left. Realizing that he probably can't get past that with Ling. Some cannon rushes you can't get by with drones, but the Lings can slip through. And then you can kill the cannon. But here it's pretty clear that that is so well placed. That cannon up there in the top right is so well placed. That you just can't even get on top of it with Lings. You'd have to kill the pylon first or something. So he cancels. Gonna go ahead and play this out in a really strange position with a very late second hatchery hatchery. It's definitely a deficit for Queen, but it's not an impossible it's not an impossible task here. 
Yeah, he went for 12 hatch, so he's got like almost no counterplay to it unless he gets the drone micro down and actually prevents the cannons going up or killing the probe and getting two drones on top of the cannon while it's building. Yeah, and, and he, he kind of botched that a little bit. So his response is going to be just a kind of like in base three hatch hydro play. So he's going to basically do like a 973 just with a very wonky saturation. Yeah, it's not going to be optimal. Definitely, uh, Mini should be able to prepare for this without too much trouble. Um, the drone transfer is going to be really long as well. So, uh, not going to get optimal saturation for quite some time. He's killing one of his pylons actually to get a probe out, I guess. He wants to get that probe yep. home. It's a little bit funny, but um, he's going to go ahead and do that. Send the probe home. Maybe actually, maybe use that to scout here. Let's see. No, it's, it's just really, it's just really great understanding of the game state. Like mm. that probe is more valuable back at home, knowing that it's three hatch hydra. Like he knows that he's not wanting to take this natural expansion, right? Right. So he doesn't need to care about like stopping the hatchery going up there anymore. Mm. He, he all he cares about now is having an optimized defense against the nine seven three timing. Right. So I'm gonna send out one zealot here to uh, start to mess with the drones possibly at the third oh he's actually turning that around heading back home he sees the hydras now popping out so um this zealot is not going to try to harass i guess i i thought he would try to loop around and get over to the third base to try and make a make a stink over there while the uh hydras are being sent across the map we actually need to see more cannons start to come up here because queen does have the hydras out and he's starting to head across the map now yeah, I mean, it, there's two forward zealots, uh, I guess, to try and, like, make Queen a little bit worried about these zealots sneaking out onto the map and getting to the third base, but it's, it's more of a bluff play. He's not actually wanting to commit with those zealots, and uh, Queen's not going to fall for it either. It's just something you do at that stage of the game to try and, like, mess with your opponent, potentially. Maybe force slings or something, or force them to go back with their hydras to buy time. But it, the Queen's not taking the bait. He's just hammering on the gates already while the cannons are warping in. He wants to target down the forge a little bit because he knows he's got plenty of time to kill these cannons. So he's just, like, taking some free damage on the forge and just letting Mini think that these cannons will warp in safely. But Queen's very on top of the timings of when these... Uh, you can think of these, like, these cannons more like clocks rather than cannons. And he's got, like, a mental map of those clocks in his mind of when he needs to pull the trigger on, like, going in with the hydras and actually sniping them down as they're warping in or what have you. He's going to get... At least the one cannon and the forge. We must have another forge here in the main for Mini. He's still warping in cannons right now. Gonna start to hit this pylon here on the right hand side. And I don't see another pylon. Looks like one cannon gonna warp in though, just in range. So he won't be able to snipe that pylon. It's very rare to see pylon snipes in uh, Brood War because they are so beefy, so healthy. Right. But um, sometimes there are some really awkward situations where it can happen. Here, it's not going to be the case. Another pylon does warp in at the back. Mini going to lose this cannon back here. Keeping all of the hydras alive. Very nice micro here from Queen. But he's going to take his third base and possibly transition. It's still an awkward transition period, though, for Queen. It seemed like he had, you know, some good pressure there. Uh, with all these hydras but now he's got a lot of hydras and not many drones with no third base this is this is looking a little bit rough yeah this is kind of what mini was banking on because mini knows that even though he have to he'll have to make a lot of cannons which will slow down his gary production he understands just how poor the saturation will be from queen after the fact so he doesn't have a great transition point so the queen will go for a bust here but um i don't think he's happy about it like he wants to trade off some of these zealots and uh, uh but he won't be able to do so like this is the one situation where keeping the zealots in the base is actually a good idea because he needs them to buffer against the a screen against the hydras because because queen is desperate to get some compensation for this hydra force right now yeah he needs to do something with this right away because uh as the zealot number gets higher and higher these Hydras are going to have to run away, and the situation is going to get worse and worse here for Queen. He's running forward, killing off a few more cannons. Oh. Wow, great targeting there. Able to pick off uh, three cannons in rapid succession with only one left. Uh, I guess one more going to warp in here on the left-hand side, but he's breaking down this wall. He's got more Hydras on the way. I thought he was going to transition to more of a macro game. Maybe Mini thought so as well, but he's really pushing the limits here with what he can do with this Hydra bus. 
He, he, even if he does transition, it's only transition into four hatch hydra. Like it's a transition into another cheese. You know what I mean? Like it's a cheese to cheese. So yeah, like the only thing that's happening here is a fourth hatchery is being made to increase production potential. So the bust will still contain, uh, still continue, and uh, at the very least he'll set up a strong contain even if the bust fails. But the, the key here is to put as much pressure onto the Protoss force as many cans as possible. But ideally he does want to bust in this situation because he wants to bust pre-storm. But he's not going to get that anymore. He will have to deal deal with at least two storms at bare minimum. Yeah, two storms are now ready. Assuming that upgrade is done, two more Templars are going to pop out. It's a dangerous uh, and difficult tight rope to walk here as Mini, but I think he's walked it just well enough that he's going to be able to get past this Hydra bust. And Queen's starting to saturate that third base, but his situation is really, really rough right now. He's got so few drones. He's just going to be adding on his Evolution Chamber now and getting his first upgrade, but... Things are really, really rough. Nice baiting of two storms so far, but um, that's, I mean, he's not going to be able to get through this wall. There's no way. No, no. I mean, we we see Mini here being happy to trade out those storms because he's he's comfortable making an Archon because he doesn't know exactly what the follow up from Queen is. It for all he knows, there was a Lair and a Spire made behind this. So having that Archon does give him a bit more comfortability and uh, not just being overrun by a sudden mutter threat. So it also allows him to come out and have a bit of escort for these small uh, infantry force so that the mutters can't just come in and like kill the High Templars and the goons for free, for example. Right, well, we're supply blocked here. Oh, we're supply blocked here as Queen. He can't actually produce anything right now. He's going to jump forward, try to pick off some of these Templar. Can he get a big number of Templar here before the fights actually start to occur, before the push out? Maybe a little bit too eager to push out here, Mini. Losing one Templar and forcing another Archon here. This is uh, this is a little bit, a little bit rough for Mini now. I mean, he's still got a lot of power here. He's still in a good position, but... If he had waited just a little longer, I think he would have had a much better push yeah. out uh, with a lot more story. Yeah. And, and Queen's been able to transition just fine. So this, like, trying to come out has achieved nothing because mm -hmm. Queen was actually throwing down hatcheries, getting an Evo behind this. So actually, Queen's starting to look quite comfortable in the game state. I would still argue that Mini will have a very strong push timing at around 12 minutes. So uh, Queen hasn't done it yet. Like, he, he he's only got, like, the bare minimal amount of units to deal with uh, Mini right now. And Mini's only just now starting to come online with, like, seven gateway worth of production. So, and the one just oh he, he did lose one sorry so it will be still at seven gateway production but yeah, soon um he will be able to push out and um he has already got his robo finishing up for that observer tech just in case there was lurkers setting up to contain him which won't be the case just yet anyway so it actually looks like queen will let him come out onto the map he just wants to skirmish yeah he's at queen is about at like 30 something drones i would say no second gas here so he's really strapped for cash can't afford to make a uh, layer, which means that DTs would be insanely powerful right now. I don't think that Mini's actually identified that, so he's not making DTs. He's just forcing his way over here towards a third base. And, you know, he's going to bait maybe Queen into making a move, maybe either droning up really hard and trying to get into six hatch Hydra, or potentially baiting him into trying to push this base uh, and try to kill yeah. this third and then take a really good trade here. And it looks like he's going to go for that second option. Yeah, it does look like the latter will be taken. There's not a lot of army oh. here for Mini. I'm a little bit worried for him. Borrowed Hydras! This would be so cool if this caught Mini off guard. Imagine him just like unborrowing on top of his army and like just sniping all the High Templars or something. Or just setting up a crazy pincer flank. Like, this would be so cool. I don't think it's going to transpire though with the observer timing. Yeah, he's going to not go for that anymore. But it was a nice little interesting idea from Queen. I would have loved to have seen that. I would like to see Borrow be incorporated more in like the more mid-game stages uh, in uh, games in general. There's a big uh, Hydra Flood coming out though, so if Mini was unwise enough to push out right now, he would be swallowed up a little bit and these these goons would get over overwhelmed. But now with the, the Hydras being forced to come over this ramp, uh, he's going to not take a very favorable trade. Uh, but it looks like Mini's actually going to give up that space and now that's going to really favor Queen. The beautiful storms coming out on the western flank and the east as well to cover the other side, but there's not enough goons here to screen 
clean off these hydros and not enough storm as well. So even if all these storms do connect quite efficiently, there's going to be enough hydros left over to bully back these dragoons and start sniping them off. Beautiful storms have been able to go down though, but like I said, there's just barely enough hydros left over to trade off some of these goons to make it a little bit inefficient for Minion with the reinforcements coming in. He may be able to soft contain and cut him off from this third base and eventually kill this Nexus. Man, I think we needed to actually kill this entire army, all the dragoons, and get the Nexus to have a chance here. I, I like look at what he's got back at home. He's got almost nothing here, and yeah. this army is just going to continue to explode in size um, as more and more rounds of those eight uh, gateways uh, just start to hit the field here. Mini is in full production mode here whereas queen is at like half capacity i would say he had that one moment with all those hydras there was some good storm storm dodges but just maybe not quite good enough and he's gonna come down here to kill off some of the cannons but i don't think he has time to actually kill the nexus the dragoons are gonna make their way down here and more hydras are gonna come up behind this but We've got almost no gas here, no third gas here, certainly for Queen. The saturation is terrible. Here comes the third base uh, probes here. They're going to saturate that really, really quickly. Queen's got like one more move left, I think, before he's just kind of out of this game. Yeah, well, he, if, he can, if he can cut off these goons from before any Templars come out to support them, he would have been okay. But the problem is, is that he's a little bit slow in doing so. So now there's a more Zealot goon that can come and flank these Hydras. So now Queen's out of position and will get sandwiched from both sides. If he was a little bit quicker getting on top of these goons, maybe it'd be a different story. But now as it stands, these goons will just be swallowed up whole by Mini. He does trade somewhat effectively, but is going to be after tapping out after losing that many Hydras. Ooh, and... Zerg is now extinct. Queen gets knocked out by a cannon rush with an excellent follow-up play from Mini. Mini just solid macro after that kind of wild early game. Uh, and, you know, Queen just kind of getting stifled there. Not able to bring it back. It's uh, a situation we've all been in. Taking that early damage with the cannon rush is brutal. I think he put up a good fight, though, after everything that happened. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Royal, the last Terran player standing here. Again, no all kill. So that all kill prize is going to continue to rise here, guys. Uh, quite a bit of back and forth here in this week of KCM. A lot of wild games, a lot of weird games, uh, a lot of quick games. We've even seen a cannon rush. We've seen a base trade. We've got a lot of variety here this week. Yeah, this is like the, you know, the variety bucket um, meal option. So you got pretty much a little bit for everyone here, for the whole family. You know, there's some, you know, boneless chicken strips if you don't want to have to, like, you know, get down and dirty chewing off the bone or something. And, you know, you got some popcorn chicken, some hot wings and some gravy to dip that into. Also, it's, it's a sport for choice. So you never know what you're going to get. You, can, you might see some crazy, really fast game where someone gets two gated. Or you might see like some crazy late game base trade scenarios. Who knows what you're gonna get? You know, it's kind of like a lucky dip. You know, don't, don't worry about picking any numbers for your lottery. Just, uh, just let you know, be a bit of a fatalist. You know, just just to pick a lucky dip, pick some random numbers, and see what you get. And that's basically KCM right now, and I'm all about it. Well, I hope we get Royal uh, taking a great game here. You know, pulling out a nice macro game against Mini, maybe taking the victory. I want to see Bisu come out. Um, he's been in the background there, waiting for his turn, but he might not get it here if Mini continues this hot streak that he's on right now. And Mini on a hot streak is insanely powerful. He's really, really scary. He's a very emotional right. player. We always say this, but uh, when he's you know not doing well, when his team's not doing well, we don't expect him to do very well. But when he's doing well and you know on top of the world he is one of the scariest players you've ever seen oh absolutely we were just talking a little bit about that off there just how scary this guy is on a high and uh yeah he certainly is feeling the high right now and uh it's possible that uh something will go wrong in this game and he'll start like you know scratching his head and getting frustrated again but as long as that doesn't happen and no wrenches get thrown into his uh, bravado, he's going to be like storming ahead of all kinds of potential shenanigans. So Royal's going to have his work cut out for him. He's going to have to be dying his eyes, crossing his T's and making sure he doesn't skip a beat here. It's like we're going for um, a pretty late gas timing. 
uh, due to the, the bunker expand. So it looks like uh, Mini is taking that range right away. So we'll be forcing out a lot of repair bill on this bunker like we expect, but not necessarily optimizing his own Nexus timing. So we'll be a slight edge for Royal if he can avoid any damage in the early game. Yeah, this is probably the best possible situation for a bunker expand. We don't have any pressure coming for, from Zealots. It's just super standard play out of Mini. Um, almost losing this SCV here. He might actually end up picking that off. Um, gonna try and meet up with it as it moves over here to the right-hand side. It's really close, but looks like Royal will be able to escape here. There are some ways that you can try to catch uh, up, up nice. to this, but he's done a great job of pulling away. He's even going to turn around, come back? Are we serious? Yeah. Well, he, he knows he can't, the probe can actually catch up to him because both of these players using manual move commands to move very uh, tightly along the hex grid here. That's why you see them like doing very like smooth diagonal and vertical move motions with their units. Uh, but it looks like there's a lot of shenanigans. We're basically playing a game of tag right now between the SCV and the Pro. Like, while the rest of the game is going on, we've got another dimension of play happening over here of a game, a classic game of tag. So the, the inner child has finally like blossomed and it's come down to a game of tag in a game of StarCraft like many years later in their lives and they're, they're back doing what they did in the playground soon. Well, the, the mom in this scenario is going to come over and throw the shoe at the child playing tag <laughs> the children here just knocking that kid off the monkey bars he's no longer allowed to play thrown out of the uh the playground here and mini is going to send both these dragons here to the front start to deal that damage like you're talking about to the bunker but royal i mean he's happy to pay this tax the protoss tax here at the right. front with the the delay on that dragoon making its way to the front and having to pick off the uh the early SCV. He's not actually gonna have to pay too much here and his factory is done. He's got the tank on the way. He's setting up all of his defenses here. He's got even an eBay uh, finishing up so he's not gonna take any damage to a DT or anything. Um, he will be prepared for the next stages and you know we're thinking about this map a little bit earlier talking about the map Apocalypse. Oh, a very fast Nexus here for Mini. Five-minute Nexus for the third? Okay. I think we're going to see a super fast expansion from Royal uh, off of this uh, bunker expand. If he finds out about it especially, but uh, even just, you know, seeing how this game has gone so far, I think that's the plan is to get the really fast third. Well, he's identified that it's just one gateway worth of production unless Mini was hiding Dragoons. Uh, that's why he's being a bit cocky with this tank, because he knows that this is the timing for four Goons to show up. So he had a little window there where he can be a little bit cocky with this tank. But he has to be careful. Four Dragoons can two-shot this tank. Like we see here, Mini shuffling up. Royal, you are playing with fire right now. Please at least repair that tank. What are you doing? He's just he's just begging for Mini to come in here and make a trade. And the three tanks are finished now. So he's going to lose this tank. But look at this. Only losing one Dragoon on the exit as well. The tanks unable to be quick enough to come down and punish with their uplight cannon. So, yeah, like, I really don't understand Royal's mindset there. He's trying to use that tank to bait the Dragoons in for a better trade of the other two tanks coming out of the factory. But honestly, like, the timings are a little bit off for Royal there. Like, he was a little bit too cocky. And I, I feel like he misread the game state a tiny bit. Well, if all of those tanks had survived, we might see Mini just get completely bowled over here. As it stands, he still might lose to this push that's coming right now. Just Royal uh, with the uh, Vulture speed finishing up. Maybe Mines coming up behind this as well. He's going to come around behind everything, start to lay down Mines, and he's going to hit the front with a couple of tanks, some Marines and all that. Oh, dude, this is going to get really, really nasty for Mini. He's already lost a lot of hp on these dra dragoons and all oh, the mine here in the middle forcing those shots onto that and they're gonna back right up into this mine oh oh, oh. 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 oh my God. I'm try I had to avoid swearing this, eh? That's crazy. <laughs> and like uh, the probe transfer on the way back is also going to take a few losses. This is like a beautiful best case scenario for Royal currently ahead in supply. 64 to 58 mini contained as well. War now going to be acting against him. Uh, you was once uh, utilized to stop Vulture run buys, but now going to make it even harder for him to come out once Royal starts to contain him. But he is uh, coming around to try and kill this Nexus. So trying to force Mini's hand and coming out from this little hidey hole while some more Vultures are trying to slip by. So he wants to pull the goons out so he can slip these Vultures 
Vultures in. Nice little tactical decision from Royal Can now mine behind these goons. It was a little bit slow, so the three Rally Dragoons will be able to get on top of those, but it is going to be uh, killing a few of these Dragoons and forcing uh, Mini back into his base deeper. Also scouts the Reaver popping out with the shuttle, so he knows exactly how he needs to battle calculate uh, in the coming phases. So we'll be uh, pulling his army back and uh, uh, understanding that he needs to just consolidate and not lose any of these units and just get these back home as soon as possible. Five minute Nexus really getting punished here. He's even going to pick up the probe that comes out to nice. reclaim that Nexus and uh, dude, Royal playing almost perfectly here. The early loss of the tank was a bit rough, but it did set him up. It gave him a nice layup here uh, for that follow up push by picking off those dragons, like at least lowering a lot of their HP made it a lot easier to push through there. And of course, that run by into the back with the a few vultures to lay down the mines everything working out really really well here and mini skimping so hard only having one gateway trying to take a nexus off of, a third nexus on one gateway is incredibly greedy gets punished here and now it's up to him to find some damage otherwise Royal's gonna run away with this game yeah, I mean, I can't fault Mini for trying to go for that kind of greedy play due to the bunker expand, but Royal anticipated that. Royal knew that he had to, you know, make a little uh, counter push. He identified the one gateway production due to only having four Dragoons to his three tanks, so he just went in there and squashed Mini like a bug and took out that third, take a tactical advantage in this game. And he has so many SCVs right now. Like, even though he hasn't taken a third base, he has like three base worth of economy. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy how many SCVs to probes he's got. Yeah, he's got a ton of SCVs. He's going to be getting his command center here, that third base. And on Apocalypse, the third base is almost guaranteed here. It's so close uh, to your natural. And once you really bunker down on that three base, you can power up to, you know, two one timing attack. And there's not really too much that a Protoss player, aside from best, can really do about it. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I, I, Mini, Mini's kind of making the right choice and like playing further greedy like you need to double down in your game plan and uh, keep trying to grow fast here but he will be punished like he, he's going for this uh, fourth base but there was a mine that wasn't block blocking the nexus but was spotting the nexus so he could just come down here kill the pro be a bit annoying and uh, frustrate Mini a little bit in the, the coming phases of the game and due to identifying the exact timings of this he, he'll, he'll know when to pull the trigger on moving out he's going to be very tentative about coming out on the map Mini trying to slow down this move out with the Shadow and Reaver. Gets a few shots off on the Goliaths and tanks, but hasn't really killed anything yet. And Royal has this like prerequisite for Goliath count to two shot that uh, that shuttle down with a, a couple of volleys. So he's got all the tools in his arsenal to really put the pressure on Mini right now. And he's currently ahead in supply about, by about 20. So oh, he's been careful that shuttle's so low already. And he, there's enough vultures here to really bully uh, these goons uh, as well on the map. So there's really not that much ho uh, counterplay for Mini besides this shuttle and Reaver. So oh, I want shuttle goes down another reaver possibly, possibly biting in dust as well does manage to scoop this up in the shuttle just, just managed to get the exit on that but yeah the only thing going for him is these two reavers in the shuttle so if he loses that he's pretty much dead soon yeah he's gonna end up getting pushed down here it seems like one last shot from that reaver oh. does pick off one tank but there's a little bit too much here and you know he's got a bare nexus down in the bottom right as kind of like his his follow-up play that's not even gonna have any workers at it um, so, I mean, he can't utilize that at all. Uh, that's, you know, slowed him down from m making more gateways, and he just doesn't have an army right now. Everything's been cleared. Um, looks like right. we had a shuttle drop off a, a Zealot, maybe, on top of that, but the mines weren't able to be dragged. He's gonna <sighs> eat mines with these Dragoons, and Rose just put on a fantastic clinic here this game. Uh, for how yeah. to deal with the Protoss player. A lot of Terrans really struggle with identifying when the Protoss is cutting corners and actually punishing them for it. But he's seen every single moment here and seized it perfectly. Oh, you're cutting a few corners here. You're not building enough uh, gateways and dragoons and all of that. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and attack and, and punish you severely for that. Now he's going to Drop one last little reaver here. Try to get a, a shot off with that. But the army closing in on the natural is a killing blow here. Mini taps out. And we will get that final game here with Royal versus Bisu. That's coming right up. Final game of the night here. Bisu versus Royal. And we've come all around, all the way around full circle back to Blitz Y. 
where we started this entire adventure. Guys, thank you so much for being here or watching this week of the KCM. We will continue to bring you this content, to uh, bring you this English cast of such a fantastic um, Korean tournament. And all we ask is that you share, and like the video, comment your favorite games let us know what you guys liked what you didn't like what you think we should improve on we're always looking to make this better to improve this experience for you guys so we thank you and we ask that you just uh yeah like the video share it with your friends and um and we'll all be good we'll all be growing together we'll have a great time here yeah and uh yes yeah, it's not much to ask you know to just uh, like the video share it a little bit and say yourself starcraft and uh what was that um yeah this is a beautiful game and uh i think that if you're going to waste some energy on something this is a great thing to waste some energy on and i don't think it's a waste i think uh energy is not lost it's only transferred and if we're transferring our energy to the, the starcraft gods and uh, tapping into that star sense and uh, trying to transcend as mere terrans i think uh that's the way forward, and eventually maybe we can become like Sarah Kerrigan and have some psionic abilities in the future, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you know, people oftentimes talk about, oh, I wasted my time, I wasted my time on this, I wasted my time on that. I always say, uh, if you learn something, then you didn't waste your time. So as long as you're learning something, guys, as long as you're uh, gaining something, uh, getting something out of this, uh, whether it's just pure enjoyment, or you're learning something about this game or about life or like we were saying we we're just talking about uh, poker the poker aspect of brood war and the way that um, people are you know hiding their builds and strategy as long as you're learning something guys it's not a waste of time so here we are with uh royal I'm gonna be throwing down i think an ebay here to actually block because there's some zealot pressure coming across the map from bisu right now well he actually wants to ebay block but bisu's been on top of this scv like white on rice and will just not allow him to build it so he's actually not going to get the block down i don't think and uh yeah conversely we saw a really great scv micro from royal almost killing that progress why he's only got nine hit points right now I wasn't able to quite pick up the kill on that, but great effort from him nonetheless. He's got the two SCVs on that geyser to kill it. He wants to go for the re-gas steal though, will he get it? Oh, uh, he's gonna gas steal again. Royal, no, not like this. Uh, he's gonna man. throw down the barracks. He's gonna throw down the, the, the sorry, the CC anyway. Um, but that's really frustrating oh. for Royal. And he gets the SCV kill, one HP on that probe. Are you kidding me? Wow, Bisu. This is like, crazy right now. No way. Oh my god. Everything going wrong for Royal. Just a series of unfortunate events here. Uh, the probe's still alive in the main with his one kill. Um, and yeah, again, not able to get the uh, block down, the eBay block. And now Zealots are going to run by as well. Dude, things are going so wacky. Okay, he runs back. <laughs> you felt bad for him. <laughs> oh, is he going to seal it again? No way. He does get that down. He, he moved. He went for it. You can see the, the probe jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted the third steal, even though it wouldn't have been as good on the third time due to... Oh, he gets the banner pylon! Are you kidding me? No way! That probe was one shot from the, 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 the Marine as well. It had one... It's got one HP and five shields. He just needed to shoot it one more time. This is crazy, dude. Oh, my God. He's forcing so many SCVs to run around the back of the patches as well to go and hit that mineral uh, field. It's just... So silly what we're seeing here for our last game. This is this is great. This is this is the the last part of that. That was the this is the last part of the variety box that we were missing, guys. The clown show. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, clown variety bucket special, and uh, it, it wouldn't be complete without a little bit of uh, shenanigans and you know clown world esque yeah, stuff. So. This is the dessert. This is the this is the uh, the fudge, the brownie at the end. <laughs> of the, the variety pack, the, the chicken bucket. Well, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump into two factory from here. This is just standard follow up from Royal. It's a bit slower uh, than it would normally be, but just so much wackiness has happened, and he will kind of push out, just kind of testing the waters here to see if he can get some some damage onto those zealots. But a third nexus at 5:30 coming down here. Uh, Bisu taking a 
a page out of the book of mini right now. One gate into a yeah. uh, nexus here, a third nexus. A, ro a royal might just like go like ng ng bay into five fact. I think is possible. So he might have a really good timing push to to hit this and the nexus being at the front. I don't know about this nexus here. Uh, the, the positioning seems a little bit rough to me because we have that catwalk that's so good to push across as the Terran player. Wouldn't it have been better to throw it up in the top left? Uh, I think you're right. I think he's just assuming that Royal won't go for a big eight minute, nine minute timing. I think he's like thinks he's safer than he is i think bisu's being a little bit cocky a little bit cocky um yeah it's hard to say for sure I, I think he has got a fairly good read on the game state he did do a lot of damage to royal and he did delay the gas for quite a significant time so i, I assume what he's thinking right now is that he's delayed the relative timings enough that he can get away with this but i'm not sure if he's read that right uh it's close i think i think it's he will be okay but yeah royal just barely won't be able to like go straight into like five facts and crush him right now so he'll be a little bit slow in coming out with this timing attack yeah the tanks are going to increment out a lot later than they did in that last game um versus mini the tanks were out much much faster we do have a higher factory count a lot quicker though because the tanks, uh, the, the factors were later. He was able to, you know, pump out three factors really fast. And a fourth factor is coming down. He is going to do this five factory play, like you were saying, I think, with this other SCV here. It's a dead giveaway, but yeah, he's trying to keep the, uh, the trying to keep this hidden as much as possible because he's got the, oh, oh is he going to be able to sneak through here? Just barely no, 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 not. Just barely not. So he yeah. can't find out about these other two factories. Yeah, the turrets are so uh, perfectly placed that um, you can't fly through there with the observer without losing it. You can with a shuttle. You can fly through the gap without losing the shuttle. You'll still take hits, but you can fly through the gap without losing the shuttle if you wanted to. With speed, not without speed. But uh, yeah, this kind of turret placement is perfect. Like It's just the right distance where you can't fly between them without both not shooting. So yeah, it's, it's just a really great setup here from Royal. He's one of the, the best at like designing his bases and stuff. Well, this push, it, it's really going to come down to whether he can come across the map here and actually kill this third base because it's its all going to be uh, predicated on dealing this damage here. Uh, will Bisu be ready for it? Can he get the good hits with the Reaver as it's coming across the catwalk? That's what we're about to find out here. He's already pushing forward. That's been spotted by the Observer. And I don't think this is what Bisu wanted to see here. He did not want to see no. this push coming already. Absolutely not. He doesn't have much back at home. He's got a few dragons here in the high ground. Where is that reaver? We really need to see that, you know, slowing this down as much as possible. Well, this is designed to counter the reaver. So in a way, it's actually good that he hasn't gone for reaver. He's just gone for gateway man as a response. Going to be relying purely on Zealot Goon. But that will also favor Royal because he can just snake up this catwalk and without any splash damage or storm or reaver scarabs to worry about. As long as he's careful enough of how he moves in it, the only thing he has to worry about is Zealot bombs. So here comes the shuttle now with some Zealots to kind of get on these backline tanks. There is a reaver in the back as well to start splashing onto these two tanks at one. One more scarab to finish those two off. Does get it, but does lose the shuttle and uh, reaver for the price of that with the marines uh, helping out but has lost all these tanks critically so now bisu resetting the game state and now is putting royal in a really precarious situation because i don't think he started a command center behind this so now he can't really stabilize either he's kind of like coming all in on this push and trying to uh, just finish the game or at least get an advantageous position from that and didn't even start a command center back at home so has no real transition from this as well it's going to kind of force to just re-macro and put on some more pressure and try and shut down this fourth base coming online as well well done bisu the reavers getting those great great hits now i don't think the royal is going to give up on this because it is quite all in he's just going to come forward try to get uh, mines in the right spots here with a couple of tanks to try and make this happen. Oh, the mine connects are insane, though. We're going to drag even more mines on top of these tanks. And picking off these two tanks is just about the nail in the coffin here. Uh, we've still got enough dragoons to push through this and kill off all these mines. And Royal, I mean, doubling down again here. It's not going to work out. So what's the play after this? Do we triple down or do we finally throw down a CC and try to take this long? I... I just don't think it's going to work either way, but uh, we have to make a decision here pretty quick. 
Well, he's kind of dead if he transitions, so that he's thinking yeah. right now, I need to pump every mineral into vultures, because if I make a CC, I won't even have enough units to probably hold off an attack, even if I do take a third base. So right now, he's kind of all in, and he, he just has to, has to like commit to trading well. If he trades well, there's a chance, but unfortunately, Bisu's doing a really good job of, really good job of getting up of all these tanks and like sweeping up the attack as it's coming in and never allowing uh, the Royal to get a good foothold or a, a strong critical mass of tanks to really push through here. Oh. So Bisu doing a great job of scavenging. Beautiful connections, though, on these Dragoons. So is kind of fighting Bisu back right now. If he can somehow get on top of this position and mine up this ramp, then things will be different. Things can be good. Um, but he has just barely enough vultures to keep fighting and enough mines late that maybe there's some way of making this work for Royal, but it's going to be really tough. Bisu's only just barely churning out enough units to keep uh, killing these tanks uh, two at a time. Has the shuttle just going back into the main, reloading up over and over again. Keeps trying to get these mine drags so far unsuccessful reaper's out again gets another scarab connection beautiful move back from royal though taking minimal damage only taking 49 hit points of uh, damage to that tank with uh, only uh, taking the splash damage by running it backwards and uh, yeah with this continuous micro from royal he's not really taking a lot of damage onto these tanks so he's being able to get somewhat of a, p a position here does lose one of those tanks finally but uh, has two tanks coming at a time with vultures running it but with the uh, zealots um, coming out uh, in such strong numbers there's not enough vultures to clean those up so even though he's getting a strong count of tanks here he needs to keep uh, churning out these vultures to scoop up all these uh, zealots that are streaming in oh he's got to kill this reaver man he killed the first reaver the second reaver is really making the math hard here for uh royal it's giving him such a headache and he does get a few more last shots on that but a dt coming up here as well dude this is so frustrating he doesn't have scan he skipped everything he's not even gone for scan here the DT is such a good play uh, for Bisu. He even gets that tank. Are you kidding me? One swipe and a mine connection killed that? That's crazy. Yep. Now he kills the Reaver. Okay, he got the Reaver. Gonna build an engineering bay here in the middle. What is this that I'm watching right now? With my eyes building the eBay here in the middle. We lost the engineering bay that was floating over the, this base on the, uh, the thirds, and now he realizes that he can't even make turrets anymore. So I guess he started kind of remaking it in Bisu's face. I think even maybe to be a bit funny there realizing his position and just kind of showing bisu like i didn't even remake the ebay like mm. maybe a little bit of a joke there at the end before tapping out potentially uh also is kind of blocking some stuff from running forward to kill the tank but it's just not enough zealots are too high of number they overwhelm the position and royals gambit there the five factory play to try and end the game before Bisu got into a really decent macro position. It doesn't work out. Bisu able to hang where Mini just couldn't quite do it. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Protoss takes this week away. Karen comes in second place. And Sir eliminated first, takes home no points for this week. Here is the point ranking with Protoss jumping ahead bursting up towards the stratosphere here on a collision course with the Zerg symbol. And both Terran and Zerg all teamed up here. They are on three points apiece. And I, I think we can see where this is going, Shun. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a little bit of a history of peeing itself. I'm going to see a carrier fly into the hive mind with this current uh, trajectory of this, uh, you know, angle of attack of uh, the Protoss points uh, as they reach out into the stratosphere and find the Zerg home planet. Yeah, this, um, I mean, it could be that history repeating itself. Last season, we had almost exactly the same situation, except Protoss took off a little bit sooner. Uh, it seems like here, though, the lineups have just been so strong in the last couple of weeks that Protoss undeniably better than Terran and Zerg. I, I feel like we have to get uh, some better Terran and Zerg players in these lineups if we want to stand any chance of shutting down the yeah. Protoss and, and reclaiming that uh, number one spot. Oh, absolutely. I would love to see Effort come back. I'm not sure how his wrists are doing, but I would love to see Effort in at least a couple of weeks. Um there's some other great Zergs. Uh, I'm not too sure about bringing on the likes of Jadong, but uh, there are a few good Zergs out there. You know, Sulky, for example. But uh, we'll have to wait. There's a lot of players uh, that just have bad scheduling issues right now mm -hmm. due to the ASL and what have you. So I'm sure after ASL is resolved, we'll see a much more comfortable lineup from all three races going forward. That'll just be a, a thing we have to endure for the next uh, week or so. 
But I'm sure in like the, the week six, seven, and eight, we'll see a lot more uh, crisper games from all three groups. Yeah, three I, teams. I think so. Once everything's been cleared up um, with the ASL, we're gonna get uh, some some better groups here. And but guys, we do appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will be back again next week with week number five for season two. We'll see you guys in that next video.